Hello, welcome to Bedtime Stories. Uh, first recording. Auld Lang Syne Bardan. Gower. Gower. Greetings and salutations from Purgatory. How long have I been here? Wait, don't tell me. It might take longer. Not that it's been too long. Now I'm caught up in this story anyhow, but not any more for any more. I started the whole war, and I didn't even see the first shot. I don't know the outcome either, only the lists of belligerents. And in purgatory, there are no winners and losers. Just a complete list of belligerents. But we go waving the flags and banners of our colors against these gray clouds, thunder, birds, shale. You must look like children. There war no war in purgatory. There never war. It's not at peace. But there war no war. This story is my favorite right now. I haven't seen any of these people in how long war it? Almost a day? Well, we sort of see days. The reader might think I should ask around for their names. Well, that's what the really lost people do here. They just cry out names, names they remember and cry and can't take it. And from them, what we call a day is when we see a line of light streak through. No bells ring, but everyone rushes over the hills for the light. And I've seen through the fog the light burning, and I could hear a horse and my friend said it's a horse named Ghost, and an angel drives the chariot. Well, up the light flies, and I've never been real close. But everyone sees the light fly off, and can hear the mad laughter. This friend of mine said she wore it real close once. And she saw the saint were reaching out to the people, but the chariot cannot slow down because it's going to make a jump. And with more and more weight of souls, it speeds terribly at the end, and people chasing just fall to their knees. The ones who cry names are always near, and they were being pulled into the chariot. I didn't know what it war the first time one of the saints were being charioted through, but I heard the mad laughter and heard it echo against the shale. Now there is reason for all this nonsense and chaos, there is. Tis all a spectrum of ideas, in and out and up and in, side-winding, tooth-nailed sisters and brothers, thinking centuries and centuries down on the recycled ephemeral line. I'm sick of modern or postmodern. East or west and twain shall pass by without ringing a bell or lifting a finger. Wherever may it be, be it ever so humble, where the notation of the present may be on the R.E. line is no matter to me, but back in the 19th century, however, I war in the flesh, the ephemeral flesh. Everyone pinch yourselves to make sure you're in the ephemeral flesh. Not that I can, but I know what it is to do so, and all from the time of my birth in Macon, Georgia, where I refused to haunt out of respect for my childhood. I were actually asked if I wanted to haunt that place, and not to have the change wear on me. 
For we see the firmament and the straggling and hurtling the people do in mass. But we have to wipe a window. And mostly we only watch for the first few weeks we are here, anyways. But I have been asked to take leave to speak twice. Once here and to close. And I promise to be brief. And I shall pass back to where the reader will hopefully surpass or join me one day. Once thou art out of thy day cloud lackadaisical flesh, and though I am unable to shake thine hand, let me shake any delusions thou may have. The text should not prove anything other than a living sacrifice of the efforts of every character herein, for their time in the flesh hath passed hither and well and for those of you yon let me say this judge as thee would judge thyself and if thou prove to have any a fault of any of the characters be assured that the writer hath all and more for the true fuller to scrub from his self and he would ask your prayers for he is not here yet, but he is, too, an ephemeral cloud passing in one day, and would smile and pray for you, for the worth and wealth of your smile. And as soon he lets leave, 